So, uh, hello everyone. Um, this will be a tutorial session about querying Wikidata, the Wikimedia Foundation's structured and linked data project for beginners. Uh, we'll start with a super quick tour of Wikidata itself to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of terms. And then we will proceed to learn how to query Wikidata <clears throat> to tap into its vast and awesome power. Um, because I'm teaching you how to do something technical, how to query Wikidata, um, I will um, encourage you to look at the shared screen most of the time where I will be typing and inviting you to follow along. There won't be much to see uh, other than that on the video. So let's get right to it. Uh, you can switch to the shared screen. <clears throat> so this is Wikidata. For those who haven't met it, it looks kind of like Wikipedia <clears throat> because, uh, because it is uh, based on the same software as Wikipedia plus an additional layer of software called Wikibase. Um, it has all the features we expect from a wiki, user pages, talk pages, history, watch lists, etc. Uh, but inside, it does not have articles, it has items. And we look at a particular item. Let's take a random number like 42. Oh, look, that happens to be the item about Douglas Adams. Um, we can see that Wikidata knows a lot of things about Douglas Adams. First of all, it knows what to call him in English, which is the current language I'm browsing in. It knows a queue number for the item. So all items in Wikidata are identified by a single queue number. And it has some aliases for him in English with his middle name, with the middle name and diacritics, uh, or with the middle initial. Uh, it also knows what to call him in other languages, as we can see in this box here. Uh, this is just a, a selection of languages. If you click down here on all entered languages, you can see Wikidata knows what to call Douglas Adams in many, many, many different languages. And then scrolling down, we see the heart of the structured data on Wikidata, uh, which, uh, which are the statements. And the statements are of the form property and value. With the left side, the, the shaded area is the properties. <clears throat> Instance of and image are properties. And the right side is the value. Uh, in this case, Douglas Adams is an instance of human, meaning the item U42, the item about Douglas Adams, has a property called instance of with a value human. This may sound trivial to us to record that Douglas Adams is a human, but it's not so trivial because it helps tell apart this item from all the other kinds of things that Wikidata can cover, like mountains and rivers and poems and religious concepts and countries, right? So Douglas Adams is none of those things. Douglas Adams is a human. Um, it also helps tell him apart from fictional characters. Um, Arthur Dent <clears throat> from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is also a human, but he is a fictional human. So in Wikidata, he would not be instance of human, he would be instance of fictional character. Uh, moving on, uh, Wikidata records all kinds of other details about Douglas Adams, sex or gender male, country of citizenship, UK, uh, etc., etc. We can see that Wikidata can record more than one value per property. For example, Douglas Adams has two given names, and both of them are recorded here, even with information about their order, which goes first. This here, under the value Douglas, um, we get 
my unruly mouse. Uh, this here is called a qualifier because it is an additional set of a property and a value. Here the property is series ordinal and the value is one, but this is a property and value that don't stand on their own. It's not correct to say Douglas Adams's series ordinal is one, right? It is, it is in fact only describing the particular value. The name Douglas has the series ordinal one in the series of names of Douglas Adams. Um, I'm going to skip a lot of uh, further details here because um, an introduction to Wikidata can be had in a different talk. Um, so we will just skip right ahead to querying Wikidata. To query Wikidata, we need to go to the query service, which conveniently is always linked here from the left in Wikidata. There's a link here called query service. You can click it to arrive at this URL, query.wikidata.org. It's also easy to remember. And that is the query system for Wikidata. Now queries is where you can really see the, the power of having gone to the trouble of collecting all this piecemeal data about Douglas Adams and about the um, millions of other items um, available and recorded in Wikidata. Uh, by the way, Wikidata has, as of this recording, 48.9 million items. That means it has some structured data about 48.9 million things. <clears throat> For comparison, English Wikipedia has 5.6 million articles as of today, 5.6 million articles. So Wikidata is already much more comprehensive than even the largest Wikipedia in terms of the things it covers. It of course covers them in a different way. You won't find narratives on Wikidata like the causes for World War II, which you could find on English Wikipedia. Right? Wikidata will only store what can be expressed as structured data. But that is surprisingly a lot. Getting back to the query engine uh, for Wikidata, um, if you type along with me and uh, click the query service, your screen may look more like uh, this, with this query helper on the side. I'm going to encourage you to close that query helper for now. We will get back to it a little later. Um, for now, I want you to focus on this. So, um, this window invites us to input a Sparkle query. Sparkle is the query language used to query Wikidata. It is a standard language, a standard technology um, that is uh, endorsed by the World Wide Web Consortium uh, for querying any linked data uh, information source. Um, because of that, because it's not a custom tool we have built for Wikidata, uh, there are um, a couple of um, uh, tiny inconveniences that we have to bear with, but we gain the benefit of being a standard language, meaning people with existing Sparkle um, experience from other linked data sources can use Wikidata query easily. And also, um, we, once we learn Sparkle, could apply this to other linked data databases. The problem, however, is that you don't know Sparkle. Uh, presumably, that is why you are watching this video. Uh, so I have two pieces of good news for you. First is we're going to learn some Sparkle right now from the ground up. And secondly, the Wikidata developers love you and want you to succeed. So they have provided you with examples. So to solve the problem of the horror of the empty page, the, the yawning void of the Sparkle box here, uh, we are going to uh, follow Picasso's advice when he said, good artists imitate, great artists steal. And we're going to steal, uh, sorry, adapt uh, an example 
by clicking the examples button here and picking the first example, the example of cats. There are 400 other examples here as of this recording. <clears throat> so, having picked the cat's example, apologies, something got stuck in my browser. Having picked the cat's example, we should be faced with this, this piece of code that we don't understand yet, but that has already solved our first problem of having an empty box with only Sparkle. So, um, we look at this query, it's called cats, and what it does is it tells us all the cats that Wikidata knows about. Uh, why does Wikidata know about any cats? Well, some cats are notable. If we click the play icon here, um, that executes the query. <clears throat> and scrolling down, we can see we got a list, or a table rather, with a bunch of item numbers, inscrutable queue numbers, and mercifully also human readable labels. Uh, names, right? That's Wikidata calls names labels. And we see that there are cats like Mr. White and Hamilton and Nutmeg the Cat and all kinds of cats like that. Um, and these are the cats Wikidata knows about because they're notable for one reason or another. Maybe they used to belong to the Clinton family or maybe they are an internet sensation and someone chose to document them. Um, Let's take a quick visit with one of my favorite cats, which is Gladstone. So to, to learn something about Gladstone, we can click this Q number, open it in a new tab, and that takes us to the actual Wikidata item about Gladstone the cat. And Gladstone the cat is an instance of house cat. We have an image for him and he's male. And the reason he's documented on Wikidata is that this cat has an employer. And the employer is Her Majesty's Treasury in the United Kingdom. Um, yes, indeed, this cat, in fact, holds the position, according to Wikidata, of Chief Mouser to Her Majesty's Treasury, starting June 2016. And he's still holding that position, as far as we know. He's, of course, named after William Ewart Gladstone, the uh, Victorian Prime Minister and politician. All right, so we have some information here about this cat. We are satisfied that this query indeed returned a bunch of cats. Uh, now let's try and understand how it did that. Let's scroll back up to the query itself and take it line by line. First of all, first line begins with uh, a hash mark. Um, and that makes it a comment. That means the computer does not care what we say here. We can say anything we like. We said cats to remind us that this piece of code is about cats, because as you can see, nothing else about it particularly screams cats. So the comment is useful, but it could have said anything else at all. Um, it could say, for example, um, um, I don't know, moose instead of cats. And if I run this query again, I still get the same 121 results with the same cats. <clears throat> this here is the number of results and how long it took. So we got 120 results in about half a second. So having satisfied ourselves that the comment is ignored, we can restore it to cats just to prevent confusion and move on. The second line is the select line. And this line is telling the query engine what we would like to see returned from this query. And as you can see, it names, <coughs> excuse me, two elements, item and item label following question marks. 
uh, these question marks denote them as variables. So we're asking the query engine to return to us the value inside the variables item and item label. And indeed, if we look at the results down the page, our table has two columns, one of them called item and the other item label. As we see, item returns a Q number and a link to the item identified by that Q number, whereas item label returns the squishy human speak uh, name for that item. So let's keep this in mind. When we end up wanting additional data in our results, more than these two columns, we will need to change the select line. Moving on, the next line says where and is followed by a block. The highlighted segment here is a block. It starts with a curly brace and ends with a curly brace. That's called a block. So every query from the, for the Wikidata query engine is essentially saying, out of all the items on Wikidata, I want only those where a certain condition is true. The condition is expressed within these uh, curly braces. So let's zoom in and see how did we express the condition, I only want cats? First of all, let's uh, add a space line here before line six, like so. Uh, this scary looking line, we, we will discuss a little later. It's, it's a, a bit of a helper. It's what helps us get labels easily, but we don't have to understand how it works just yet. So actually the condition, what tells the query engine that we want cats, is just this simple line, this line that has three elements in it and ends with a full stop. I'm going to add a space here so you can see the full stop a little better. The space is not mandatory. So it has three elements, this line. And to those of you who are familiar with Wikidata, who have, who have watched the Wikidata introduction, these three elements remind us of the triple of item, property, and value. Item, property, and value. And that is exactly what these three are supposed to remind you of. Because this line is essentially a pattern that we are asking the query engine to match or match items against. So it goes through all of Wikidata and it returns to us only those items where there is a match between what we specified here and what the item contains. So let's add here a little comment to help us. So comments start with this, right? And we'll say item property, just to remind us what is what. <clears throat> so, we're asking the query engine to match any item, that's this part, we're not asking the query engine to match a particular item ID, because remember, we want all the cats on Wikidata. We don't want only cats with Q number so and so, right? We want any and all cats on Wikidata. So under item, we don't want to specify a very specific value. In fact, whatever it is, whatever the QID, we don't care, we want it. That's when we use a variable. Here, question mark item. This is where the value, sorry, this is where the variable gets its value. This is what populates it with value. So we say, look, match whatever the QID number is, just put it into the variable item. But I do have conditions about the property and the value. So I want items that have specifically property 31, specifically property 31, which is instance of, 
and with value specifically U146, which is house cat. How do I know? Well, you can always hover over these and you get the translation from Wikidata numbers to squishy human speak, right? Instance of house cat. And you don't have to memorize this. You never have to memorize the numbers for uh, Wikidata IDs. There is an autocomplete function that I will show in just a moment. Uh, but to understand why this line finds us the cats, we need to rephrase our question from human terms to Wikidata terms. So in human speak, we might say, get me all the cats, right, like this. But in Wikidata terms, all the cats can be translated to mean all the items that have instance of with value house cat, right? Because that is what a cat looks like on Wikidata. What a mountain looks like on Wikidata is an item that has instance of mountain. A cat has instance of cat. So saying I want all the cats on Wikidata in technical terms is saying I want all the items that have the instance of property with the value cat. So that's what we're saying here. Get me any item, I don't care about the ID, that has specifically the instance of property, property 31, with specifically the value house cat Q146. All right, again, we ignore this long and scary looking line. So that's really it, that's the condition. I simply gave it a pattern to match against, and the pattern says, I don't care about the item ID, but it has to have instance of, and it has to have value house cat under the instance of. Uh, okay, so now we know how to find all the cats on Wikidata. That's moderately useful, but really we would have liked to do more than find cats on Wikidata. How about all the dogs? Can we find all the dogs on Wikidata? Yes, we can. And what that means in Wikidata terms is, again, all the items that have instance of with the value dog. So all I need to do to change this query to find dogs for me is go here, and instead of specifying specifically house cat, which is Q146, I need to specify a different Q number. Before we do that, let's say a few words about these extra characters here beside the Q146 and beside the P31. These are prefixes, and they are just for our convenience. Technically, everything in a Sparkle query should refer to URIs, but they are a little lengthy to type all the time, so we have these handy prefixes. So just remember this. Every time you specify a Q number in a Wikidata query, it has to be prefixed by WD colon, Wikidata, right? WD colon. And every time you mention a property that you want to match against, you want it to be prefixed with WDT colon, not WD, WDT for proper T. Remember this funny pronunciation, it will help you keep it in mind. WDT for proper T. Um, so we leave the WD colon, but instead of Q146, which is cat, we need to put in the value for dog. But what is the value for dog? I don't have to memorize this. Right after the colon, I can press control space, control space. After pressing that, and only after pressing that, I am invited to type a human speak name, and Wikidata will try to help me find the right number. So I can just type dog, and I have this drop down now and I can pick the right item. It's very important to pick the correct item. In this case, it's the first one, domestic animal. Yep, that's the one I meant, Q144. I did not mean the sign of the Chinese zodiac, and I did not mean uh, the heraldic animal hound, <clears throat> nor did I mean a painting 
by uh, Theo van Duisburg. So um, it's important to pick the right item. If you look for all the items that are instance of dog, the sign of the Chinese zodiac, you probably won't get what you expect. So I click this one and my human speak is changed into reassuring Q numbers, in this case, 144, and that's it. I can run my query, and now I got 304 results, not 120, uh, and indeed, these are dogs, like this famous dog, Laika. Um, so that's a whole bunch of notable dogs. We won't go and explore them, but you're welcome to. Um, and the only thing remaining to do with this query is maybe make it less confusing by changing my comments, although, again, the computer doesn't care, but for us humans, uh, changing the cat to dog so that nobody gets confused. So these, this is now a query that finds all the dogs. All right, so we know how to find all the cats and all the dogs. That's still not terribly useful. Can we expand this a little? Well, can we find all the countries that Wikidata knows about? Yes, we can, with exactly the same method. Instead of looking for instance of dog, we are now looking for, pardon me, instance of country, not country music, nope, this one, distinct region in geography. That's what we want. We change it to country, we run the query, and now we got a list of countries that Wikidata knows about. So in other words, we now know not just how to find cats and how to find dogs, we know how to find anything. Well, almost. We've only been using one property of Wikidata, the instance of property. So if we're looking for, um, say, American journalists, um, we cannot search using what we've learned so far. We cannot say, well, I'm looking for all the items that are instance of American journalists, because Wikidata takes instance of to mean the essence of a thing. And people are not born journalists, right? They're born humans. So for all humans, as we saw in the case of Douglas Adams earlier, all humans should be instance of human. All real humans, right? Not, not fictional humans. Uh, so those American journalists will also be instance of human. They would not be instance of American journalists. Which means we need to actually query about other properties. In fact, we don't just want all the humans, and we don't even just want all the journalists. We want all the journalists who are also American. Meaning, we want to combine more than one condition. Happily, that is very easy to do with Wikidata query. All we need to do is add another line to add a condition. So first of all, let's start by making sense and change the, the title of this query to be American Journalists. Now, I still want this line that says instance of, but this time, what should the American journalist be an instance of? It should be an instance of human. Human, which is just Q5. That's easy to remember. Asaf? Asa, right. Yes. Just a quick question. Um, how do you get that auto complete search thing to show up? I tried to do that on mine and it didn't work. You know, when you, you just you, you type in a word and it does that auto search for the... Yeah, so what you need to do is, let me do that again. So here after the colon, you press control and space. Control and space. Then it shows up, then you can type. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So, um, yes, so human five great so now I'm looking for all the items that have instance of with value human all right and now second line I'm adding an additional condition not only do I want the item to have instance of human I also want this item um, 
to be American, right? And how, how is that expressed in Wikidata terms? Being American is expressed using a property called country of citizenship, and the value would be the United States of America. Um, now, so that for the property, I need the property country of citizenship, and I need to refer to it by number. I don't actually remember its number, so I just type WDT for property, and you, you saw that brief message, I hope, at the bottom that reminded you that you can press control space to activate auto completion. Um, and I can just type the property I want. In fact, properties have aliases too. So for example, if I don't remember and I say, oh, I want to ask about the uh, nationality of this person, I can start typing nationality. And even though you can see I typed nationality, I'm being offered correctly the property uh, country of citizenship. That's what it's actually called. All right, so P27. And the value of the nationality I'm looking for in this query is USA, right? So WD colon space, and I can just type USA, which is one of the uh, aliases, of course, for the United States of America, Federal Republic in North America. Yep, that's the one I need, mean, not USA Network, the TV channel, not the Union of South Africa, not any one of these other meanings of USA. This is the one I mean, so I pick it. And I end my line with a full stop. Don't forget the full stop or you will um, encounter an error. All right, so this line says, um, and who are citizens of the US, all right? That's what this line added. So now I'm not looking for all the humans, I'm looking for all the humans who are US citizens. But that's not enough. I also want them to be journalists. So I add a third condition. This time, I'm asking about the same item about the property occupation. That is property 106. I happen to remember, but I could have looked it up. And the value here would be journalists, right? People whose occupation is journalist, or one of whose occupations is journalist. Uh, I don't remember the Q number for journalists, so I press Control Space. I start typing. Here we go. Person who collects, writes, and distributes news. That's the one I mean. Journalist. Not journalism. Journalist. That's the occupation. Full stop. And who are journalists? Remember, this English text I'm adding is for your benefit. The query engine absolutely doesn't care. All right, let's run this query and see what happens. Queries can take a long time, depending on the complexity of the query and on the size of the returned results. So Wikidata actually knows <clears throat> no less than 13,488 American journalists. That's why it took a little while. And we got a list of these journalists. As you can see, Living and dead, right? Mark Twain is included. Mark Twain was, among other things, a journalist. Um, great. So we have a list of journalists. Now, I want to reflect for a moment on what we've just learned. We haven't just learned how to find American journalists. I hope you realize that by changing the Q numbers here, as we've done from cats to dogs, you now know how to find Serbian football players or uh, South African poets, uh, right? Or any other combination of uh, nationalities and occupations. In fact, you've basically learned how to make a complex query or compound query, adding conditions 
one on top of the other, and you could change the P numbers, the properties, and ask about completely different things. Instead of asking for, uh, say, journalists who are US citizens, I could ask about journalists um, born in Chicago, just as an example. Let's prove that to ourselves, all right? <clears throat> So, you know what, we don't care about the nationality, but we want, so I removed, right, the line about the nationality, but I do want this person to have been born in Chicago. So there is a property for that called, hmm, is it called birthplace? Oops, misspelled. Is it called birthplace? Well, not quite, it's called place of birth but Wikidata did the right thing. Place of birth. All right, P19. And the place of birth I want is WD colon, and I do not remember the Q number for Chicago, but Wikidata has my back, right? This one, county seat of Cook County, Illinois. Perfect. And let's add a comment. Okay. And on the query. This was an easier query because there are fewer journalists born in Chicago than American journalists, of course, right? And we got a list of people uh, who are journalists and who were born in Chicago. Let's uh, satisfy ourselves on that point. Let's click one of these at random. <clears throat> William H. Hinton. So, instance of human, that satisfies our first condition, and um, occupation, journalist, right here, right here, that satisfies our second condition, and place of birth, place of birth, here we go, place of birth, Chicago, all right, so all three of our conditions were met. Wikidata is working. Now this already shows us the kind of question it would have been really hard to answer without Wikidata, right? If we walked to even the Harvard University reference desk and asked, can you give me a list of journalists born in Chicago? Um, unless the Harvard reference desk is already all over querying Wikidata, I don't know how easy that would have been for them to do, uh, right? The, the, the resources, the standard resources that uh, are at libraries um, may not give you the ability to answer this kind of question without a lot of paging through who's who or, or similar books. So we got this answer in under a second, in 600 milliseconds. So I hope I've convinced you that uh, a little more than half an hour into our tutorial, you already possess the awesome power of combining arbitrary conditions um, and finding the results. You could come up with a list now of people who were born in Paris, died in Moscow, um, who are painters. You could run that query now. Um, any questions so far? No, I, I was just uh, playing around running queries for rockets, which is my... You're already using your awesome power. That's I'm good. already using my awesome power. It's quite that cool. Very good. You beware, you may be, become drunk with power by the time we're done. So, we, we, our power is boundless. We can query for absolutely anything now. Well, almost. Um, there are some other useful things to learn. For example, what if we want... Um, what if we want to exclude something from our query? So I want all the journalists who were born in Chicago. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's, let's go with our previous query, but leave out those journalists born in Chicago. Okay. So, 
Let's get back to our previous query by undoing a bunch. Here we go. Right, the citizens of the US who are journalists. But instead of getting all 13,000, whatever it was, I want only the US journalists who were not born in Chicago for some obscure reason. The way to do this is actually very simple, but I, it, it requires a new command. That command is minus, minus, and minus is followed by a block. So we start the block with a curly brace, and inside the block, we put the undesirable pattern, and that's this pattern, the, the born in Chicago pattern, and I close the block. All right, so I'm saying I want only items that match each and every one of these three conditions, right? They have to be human, they have to be citizens of the U.S., and they have to be journalists, but then I want you to subtract from that collection anything that matches this pattern, pattern born in Chicago. And the fact that it is a block should tell you that I could have added another condition here, right? I could have excluded, I don't know, only people who were born in Chicago and uh, died in Los Angeles, right? Let's stop short of that level of arbitrariness and run our query. Again, there's plenty of journalists, so it takes a few seconds. By the way, if one of you <clears throat> has tried to run a query for all the humans, um, you will have encountered a query timeout. That means it took too long to get the result because there are millions and millions of humans on Wikidata, and Wikidata Query Engine cannot answer that that general a query. There shouldn't really be a business use for it, right? That there, there's never a moment when you want all the humans on Wikidata. Uh, all right, so we got 13,261 results instead of um, whatever it was, right? So, so the, the, the 300 or 200, however many was uh, Chicago-born jour journalists are now not included in our query. So this is, this, is, this is how you exclude people, uh, or items, it doesn't have to be people, right? I could say I want all the mountains in the world except those in Canada. Um, so that's how we exclude things. By the way, if we're really proud of this query, because now it includes some complicated syntax, and we want to share it with our grandmother or something, uh, we can click on this link here, just above the play button, there's a link shape link uh, button. If we click it, we get a tiny URL generated for us on the spot. And this tiny URL, if you send it uh, to someone or post it on Twitter, and someone pastes it or clicks it, will take them directly to the Wikidata query system with your query already uh, filled in. So that's a way of sharing queries. It is also the way to save a query. There's no other way. There's no save button here. Um, and you don't need to log in or anything. So there's no real way to save your work. So if you spend a lot of time crafting uh, a very crafty query and you don't want to lose it, you need to create a link for it and then save that link somewhere, uh, you know, in an email, um, on, on, a, on a page somewhere. Um, or you could, of course, copy the entire Sparkle text, you know, and paste that somewhere. That's another way of saving the query. Just remember, it won't wait for you here in the query system. When you come back next time, you will start with an empty page, and you will need to reconstruct your Sparkle query if you have not saved it. Remember the old Nintendo saying, all that is not saved is lost. All right. So uh, we know how to share our query. By the way, if you're worried your Sparkle will um, uh, terrify your uh, elderly relatives, uh, you can also share just the results. And that's with this button here by the results, this link button here. You can click short URL to result. And this tiny URL 
When shared, I'm now pasting it in a separate tab, this tiny URL will show them the nice Wikidata logo and then take them directly to the results without the scary sparkle. All right, so these are two ways to share your magnificent sparkle queries. Uh, this would be a good moment to check in on the query helper, the one I, I told you to dismiss. Uh, that's here with the I button here. If we click this now, we see that uh, with some slight uh, interface difficulties, it is um, containing um, a, a representation of my existing query in nice handy uh, drop downs. So if I wanted to change my query now from American human journalists to, let's say, Brazilian, right? I, I just from the drop down very easily select Brazil. And from journalist, I, let's say, select politician. Right? Just by clicking in the drop down, I don't know if you've noticed, these numbers have changed in my query. So instead of Q155, they are now, uh, instead of Q130, they are now Q155, etc. And now my query is no longer about American journalists. Now it is about Brazilian politicians, uh, which there are many. So this query may also take a few seconds. So this is a, a nice and friendly way to kind of tweak. Yeah, so now we have a list here of Brazilian politicians. Uh, it's a nice way of tweaking the values instead of kind of deleting characters, pressing control space and typing over them. Uh, but it is, it is a limited thing. So it's not, it can't write the query um, for you, um, but it's, it's nonetheless um, useful. So let's dismiss this again. <clears throat> and we got 7,856 results. That's a lot. What if I just wanted, you know, uh, 20 Brazilian politicians? I just need some examples. I'm not really going to go through 7,000 results anyway. Uh, I can actually tell Wikidata Query to give me only a limited set of results. That's very simply by saying, <clears throat> after the where block, uh, the query helper has moved things around for me for some reason. Uh, after the where block, I can say limit 20. That's it, limit 20. Uh, note, the limit has to be outside the where block, right? After the closing brace of the where block. By typing this, I run my query and I get just 20 results. That is also one of the techniques to reduce the query time if you are encountering a timeout. Uh, just ask for fewer results if that works for you. <clears throat> Okay, let's move on. So we know how to exclude things. What about, um, let's see, um, instead of politicians, let's go with poets. Poets are great. Okay. So we want poets and Nothing. We are still excluding people born in Chicago, but that shouldn't be uh, the problem. Oh, because I selected the wrong item. So here's a teaching moment for us, right? I expected to get a list of Brazilian poets, but I got nothing. When that happens to you, <clears throat> you need to start ex examining your query. Now, this is the line I changed, this one about the occupation. So that is the immediate culprit. And if we look at this value, you, see, you can see that the description is song. So this is a song called Poets because I typed poets and selected the first one that came up uh, because I was distracted. Of course, what I meant to do is say occupation poet this one, person who writes and publishes poetry. That's what I meant to do. Uh, but this could happen to you as well, of course, right? You, you thought you were uh, 
uh, picking the right thing and you didn't. Now that we have picked poet, we did indeed get a list of 20 Brazilian poets. Why only 20? Because we still have our limit 20 here. Let's remove this limit and run our query. And now we have 11,000, uh, yes, 1,100, 1,132 uh, poets, Brazilian poets that Wikidata knows about. Always remember, the results are to be qualified with, well, this is what Wikidata knows about. Wikidata will tell you everything it knows and no more. That, of course, can never be taken to mean the number of poets in Brazil is 1,132. That is, of course, incorrect. Um, just remember that when you interpret the results you got. So let's remove this exclusion of people born in Chicago and let's restore our comments that are deleted by the query helper, which is another reason uh, I don't like using it. But um, so let's remind ourselves this line is occupation poet. This line is um, citizenship Brazil. And this line says humans, right? Let's also fix this. Brazilian poets. All right. Now, what if, so I have 11, uh, 1,132 poets. What if I want all the Brazilian poets or novelists? Poets or novelists? That is actually something we don't yet know how to do. We could add a line here, of course, right? that says the item should have occupation, P106, with value novelist, this one, author or writer of a novel, right? Occupation novelist. But what would that do? That would, of course, create an and condition, right? It would look for humans, Brazilians, who are poets and novelists. And uh, there are some, of course, if we run this query, we get no less than 103 of the 1,132 are both poets and novelists. And that's great to know. That is how I find people who are poets and novelists. But if I want not the intersection of poet and novelist, but the union, right, the superset of poets and novelists, well, then I need some new technique. And th this, this is the key word. Union, just like in set theory, the keyword union, and union connects two blocks. So we need to, to surround the poet line with a block. It doesn't have to have, uh, the braces don't have to have their own lines. This is a little more readable, right? I want the occupation poet crowd, union the occupation novelist group. Right? And now, how many results do I expect to get? I don't know exactly, but I definitely expect to get more than 1132, right? Because that, those are just the poets. And yes, I got 1516, 1516 results. So some of these people will be novelists and not poets. In fact, I know exactly how many because we just, <clears throat> we just found out uh, in the previous query, how many are both, right? Um, questions about this, about or conditions? No, none. Okay. Um, all right. So are you drunk with power yet? Uh, not, not quite drunk with power, but, but. Okay. So we need to add some more superpowers. The, the goal of this talk is definitely to get you drunk with power. Uh, but remember, uh, use it for good and not for evil. Um, okay, so we know how to exclude things, we know how to or things. Uh, it does look like we can really query for just about anything. Um, what if I want a list of American politicians? That's already something we know how to do. But what if I want a list of American politicians whose father was also a politician? Let's think about that for a moment. As with every query, 
we need to translate it in our minds or, or in writing into Wikidata speak. All right, so let's uh, start a new tab here. And uh, by the way, instead of remembering the long scary line, we can always just start with the cat's query, right? So that you don't have to remember this line. Um, and let's call this query American politicians whose father was also a right. Um, oh, sorry. Before we do that, before we do that, let's learn something else. Uh, let's go back to our Brazilian poets. <clears throat> what if I want um, to find out where? these Brazilian poets and novelists were born. I want to find out where they were born. Not make a condition about it. Not, I'm not looking for only Brazilian poets born in Sao Paulo or, or elsewhere. I'm, I just want to know where these 1,500 Brazilian poets or novelists were born. I want more information in the results. Until now, we've been satisfied with just the labels, just the names of these people. So when I want more results, what do I need to change? I mean, more information per result here in the table. You may remember that is the role of the select line, right? The select line. So I can just add the variable I would like to uh, output. In this case, let's call it um, Let's call it birthplace, all right? Just adding another variable starts with a question mark, birthplace. And if I run my query again, <clears throat> lo and behold, now my results table contains three columns. And the third one is indeed birthplace. Just one problem, there's nothing in it. It is completely empty all the way through. The reason it's completely empty is that we told the query engine, I would also like there to be a column with the values inside the birthplace variable, but we didn't put anything in the, in the birthplace variable. To do that, we need to somehow mention this variable that we just invented. We need to mention it inside our query. So how do we do that? We <clears throat> include this variable in a statement inside the where block. So in this case, we want this poet or novelist, want this item to have some kind of birthplace. Remember, that was a property, right? So we can just uh, look for it again. Birthplace, here we go, place of birth. All right, now, what, what should the value be? What should the value of the birthplace be? Remember, I'm not looking for a specific birthplace. If I were, of course, I would just use the Q number for that place. But I'm not looking for a specific birthplace. So just like the first uh, element in these lines, where I'm not looking for a specific QID, right? Uh, here, I'm not looking for a specific birthplace, so I use a variable, meaning I start with a question mark, and the variable I use is the one I declared here above, the birthplace variable. What this says to the query engine is, what this line, line number nine in my view, uh, what this says is, look, I want the item to have a P19 property with some value. Whatever that value is, I don't care. Just stick it into the variable birthplace for me, okay? That's what I'm asking. Let's add a comment here um, and put the birthplace into a variable. Now, let's run our query. And wonderful, now the birthplace column is no longer empty. Uh, however, awkwardly, it includes uh, inscrutable Q numbers which is perhaps not what we meant, right? We probably just wanted to see, you know, the name of the city or town these people were born in. Of course, I could click through, right? I could click Q174 and discover that it is 
Sao Paulo. That's great, but I don't want to have to do that. So the Wikidata developers love you and want you to succeed, which is why they have created the label service. That's the thing this scary line is about. Um, this, this, the inclusion of this scary line means that we can simply add the word label with a capital L, yes, it does matter, the word label with a capital L to any variable that we define to automatically get the human label instead of the Q number. If I change my select line, not the variable itself, but the select line to say, don't give me the actual value, which is a Q number, give me the label for the value, please. And I hit play. This time, <clears throat> I will get the actual names of the birthplaces of these poets and novelists. All right, so this is how we add data to our query by including another variable in the select and making sure some, somewhere in my condition block, my where block, I'm actually putting a value into the variable. This is the way to do it. Any questions on this? This is a, a, a new level of power for us. Um, yeah, just a, just a quick question. So where, okay, so line nine where you've specified that you wanna call the property birthplace, is that line, will this query result in only showing humans who are both poets and novelists and who have a property for birthplace? Yes. Thank so you. thank you for this question. That was, uh, uh, if, you, if you had not asked it, I, I would have asked it myself. Uh, the, the, the keen among you may have noticed that instead of our 1516 novel, novelists or poets, we now have 928 results. We have lost uh, you know, five or 600 results. And the reason is precisely what you just uh, pointed out. The reason is that's what we told the query engine to do. It may not have been what we meant to do, right? We just wanted to see the birthplace. But what we've actually said with this line number nine is, remember, it, it says, I demand that the item have a P19 property. So for those items, that do describe novelists or poets from Brazil, but that don't have a birthplace specified, and of course there are such items, those items do not meet our criteria. Our pattern in line number nine is excluding them. Okay, that's not perhaps what we meant, right? We may have meant, you know, if there is a birthplace, I'd like to see it, and if there isn't, well, you know, just, just leave it empty, right? That might have been kind of our intuitive expectation, but that is not, the query that we ended up writing. Okay, the query we wrote says, no, there must be a property 19. It's true that I'm not demanding it have any particular value, but it must exist. And that, as it turns out, excluded nearly 600 novelists and poets from my list. So, maybe that's not what I intended to do, right? I, I do want to include novelists and poets without a birthplace. But I also want to show the birthplace for those novelists and poets for whom it is known. The way to do this is a new command that we will learn now. And that command is, you know, this pattern, it's optional. I don't want to make this an exclusionary pattern. And the way to express that is the optional keyword. That also receives a block like minus and union, right? So we surround the pattern that we want to be optional with the optional keyword, all right? And now when we run this query, we expect it to return 1516. Well, 1517, maybe someone has just added um, a, a poet or a novelist um, as we were speaking, because Wikidata is a wiki and it changes all the time. But uh, certainly we didn't expect there to be less than what we got, uh, you know, 10 minutes ago. So 15, 17 results, that looks good to me. And now you can see if you scroll down these results, 
that a lot of them have the birthplace, but here we go. Sooner or later, we find an item. I'm highlighting it. I don't know how clearly it is seen in the recording. Uh, this this person, right, does not have a birthplace and yet appears in our results. So this this nuance here of whether uh, a, a certain line in your query should or should not exclude results is very crucial. When you start building your own queries in Wikidata, you need to be very mindful of what you may have excluded without intending to, like in this example of the birthplace. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, perfectly. All right. So we know how to um, we know how to produce additional data. And that's a very important superpower. Now we're ready for our next challenge, which is the American politicians whose father was also a politician. Let's try and translate that into Wikidata terms. All right, so let's uh, just in a comment here. What does that mean in Wikidata terms, right? It means, well, I want real politicians, you know, not uh, President Bartlett. So let's start with instance of human, right? That has to be part of it. Secondly, <clears throat> I want citizenship, US, right? I've seen this before. Then I want occupation, politician. That's the easy part. That's just a list of American politicians. Now, how do we express the fact or the condition that the father was a politician? Well, we're not sure. Uh, that's a good, so, so when, when you find yourself facing this, like you have a question, you have a research uh, question or a query that you want to run, but you're not sure how to translate that into Wikidata terms, one way to go about it is to actually browse Wikidata and find an item that you know would satisfy your query and then see you know, where in this item you can find uh, properties and values to, to hang your query on or to express your query with. So let's take someone like um, um, let's take someone like um, George W. Bush. Right? Um, George W. Bush, as we know, is an American politician, and we also uh, probably still remember uh, that his father was also an American politician. All right. So. In this item, we expect there to be some kind of expression of that. And uh, we can just start browsing, but <clears throat> it's very easy actually to find down here. Uh, there is a, a property called father, simply called father. And what is the value of this property? Well, it's an item, you know, it's a link to Wikidata's item about the father, George H.W. Bush. Okay, so there is a father property that we can use. So let's get back to our query. And we say, all right, so we're looking for humans, US citizens, occupation politician, with a father property, with what value? What am I looking for here? Well, am I looking for all the, hum all the US politicians whose father was this person specifically? No, right? Look at our uh, problem statement at the first line. We're looking for American politicians whose father, whoever he may have been, was also themselves uh, himself a politician. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking only for U.S. politicians whose father was specifically person X or specifically person Y. When we are not looking for a specific value, that suggests we need a variable. Call that variable father. All right. Now, uh, let's let's pause here and implement this. Just Human politicians, 
uh, that Wikidata knows of a father of or for, right? So let's start with instance of human citizenship USA. Uh, occupation, P106, politician, politician, and then we want this same item to have a father property, that's uh, P22, with what value? Oh, no specific value, just some variable, let's call it father, who have a father. Now, do I make this optional? <clears throat> I don't make this optional because remember, my query wants specifically politician fathers. So if there is no father property, then obviously uh, it doesn't satisfy my conditions. So in this case, this line will not be optional. I, I do intend to require that the item have a father property. Now let's also make sure it comes out in the output by including this variable here and running our query. This will give us a list of American politicians for whom Wikidata knows of a father. Oh, but guess what? Um, I forgot to say father label, so I got inscrutable QIDs. If I change it to label and run it again, I should get human, res human readable results. <clears throat> So we can see, for example, that there was an American politician named Charles Edison, whose father is none other than Thomas Alva Edison. But Thomas Alva Edison, as far as I know, was not a politician, right? We haven't yet filtered for only politician fathers. The way we do this, this is our next uh, stage of power, is we pose a condition like the other conditions we have uh, posed, but this time our condition is not about item. This is the key. Now we add a condition about the linked item, this one. Remember, our politician will have a father property that links to whoever that father was. That father entity, that item that we're linked to, that's the one we want to also require be a politician. So our next line begins with the variable father. This is the key here. Now we are posing a condition, and we could pose a whole series of conditions, about the linked item. This is new power. This is something we haven't done before. So this father item, should also have a P106 occupation property with a value politician, which I can copy from above is 82955, right? And the comment will say uh, who himself was a politician, right? Okay, this is, this is kind of the, the one-two uh, move here, right? Number one, we put uh, a value into a variable pointing to some other linked item from my original item in the query. And then I can now, now that I have the item with a name I can refer to, well, that name can be the item in the pattern to match other properties and values. Hope that is clear. We run this query now. We get fewer results, of course. We don't get Mr. Edison anymore, but we do get the Bushes, and we get uh, Lincoln's son, for example, and LBJ's son, and Teddy Roosevelt Jr., etc. Uh, people we would have expected uh, to find here, Roosevelts, etc. So this is a nice query to to study uh, political dynasties in America. And of course, by simply changing Q30 to Q155, 
for Brazil, I'm suddenly exploring political dynasties in Brazil to the extent, as always, that Wikidata knows about these people. And the data is certainly still partial uh, for everywhere. Uh, but again, remember, any one of these is tweakable. So having spent the time to build this query about political dynasties in the US, uh, with, with a simple change, I can now get political dynasties everywhere in the world. I can also get uh, painterly dynasties, right? By changing occupation politician to occupation painter, I can find painters whose fathers were painters. Um, questions about this? No. Okay. Now this is really the, the perhaps the biggest dimension of power that we've added in that we now uh, can really build complicated queries to answer complicated questions. At this point, I will mention a few other um, tools and features, and then we'll proceed to showcasing rather than teaching some more advanced um, tools. Oh, but you know what? Before we do that, let's show one more thing here. So I went back to the uh, American uh, politicians. No longer need this thing. Uh, so this query resulted in uh, some um, 19th century figures, right? <clears throat> and let's say I don't want that, right? I want only kind of recent, more recent people. Um, so to do that, To do that, I would like to add some kind of additional constraint um, and let's do find this. Okay, so let's say we want uh, those politicians, I mean the, the children, right, the children of the father politician. I want only those born, say, uh, after 1950, all right, uh, to keep it a little more recent. So to do that, we can learn um, another uh, piece of data. No. Yep. Sorry. Yes. So we want this uh, uh, the child, right? By the way, we're calling the, the the first item item just because we've been kind of copying it over and over from the cat query. But remember, it doesn't have to be called that at all. We can call this child instead of item as long as we change all the occurrences, right? So we say, this is the child and that is the father. So this is a little more readable, right? So we know what refers to what, okay? And now that we've done that, we can pose a further condition and say, you know what? I want the child's date of birth. And of course we have a property for that, date of birth, here we go, P569. And now, again, um, am I looking for a particular date of birth? No, I'm not, right? So the moment I say, no, I'm not looking for a particular date of birth, I am looking for it to be in a certain range, but I'm not looking for it to have a certain value. So because I'm not looking for a particular date of birth, let's put it into a variable. Let's call it DOB, date of birth, all right? So the children, um, child should have a date of birth, okay? Let's also add it to our select DOB, right? So that we can see the, uh, the dates of birth. So now we have 443 results, 
right? With these dates of birth here on the right, remember these are the child's date of birth, right? So, um, yeah, so uh, Lincoln's son, right, was born in 1843. That's the kind of person I want to exclude. Uh, also, uh, LBJ's daughter, right, she was born in 1944. I want to only have people born after 1950. So now, now that we have the value of the date of birth inside a variable, variable DOB, now we can add another uh, feature, and that is a filter, a filter. And when we say filter, only things that meet whatever uh, function we put in the filter will uh, make it. So we can say, you know what, I want that date of birth's year this is a little auxiliary function, the function year, so that I don't have to deal with the whole date, because I don't care about the, the day and the month, right? But I want the year to be larger than um, 1950, right? And I close the parentheses here. These are parentheses, not curly braces, okay? Only allow children born after 1950. And now, instead of 443 results, we have 82 results. And indeed, only people, you can see 1951, 52, only people born after 1950. Okay? Again, the filter command is extremely powerful. You can make all kinds of manipulations uh, with it, um, including, you know, uh, I want people born in towns that have E as the third letter in their name, uh, as, as arbitrary as that. Uh, now, you may be asked, saying to yourself, well, I don't, you know, I don't know what functions I can put inside the filter. You just came up with this year function, and how do we know all that? And the answer is, I understand, I sympathize. We don't have time in this particular tutorial to go through all of these options, but this is a good moment to introduce you to the help resources that are available to you. I know, I know, nobody reads the help. That's why you're watching this video. Uh, but still, if you are now convinced that this uh, awesome power is worth exploring and utilizing, and you will run into uh, cases where you will want to learn some more of these functions, uh, under the help button here, there is a fine user manual that you could read, you know, when all else fails. Um, there are ex the example queries, uh, the same examples that are available here. And by the way, you can type here uh, something. I'll, I'll show this in a minute. Uh, we'll get back to this. Um, you can get help on the Sparkle syntax itself. Right, the language itself, what command goes where, what, what goes inside the where, what goes outside the where, um, a list of prefixes, a, a whole bunch of things. So there's also a very useful page that I encourage you to use called Request a Query. This is just a wiki page on Wikidata where you can request queries that you uh, are not able to produce yourself. So under here, you will find people saying, hey, I want to do this thing, and the page is uh, watched by uh, old Wikidata query uh, hounds, people who have a lot of experience with Sparkle and Wikidata query, and whose joy in life is to take up your challenges, your human speak uh, query, and uh, translate it into a beautiful and highly performant Wikidata query. Uh, so if you have an idea for a query and you don't know how to do it, or you have a query that is timing out and you don't know how to reduce it so that it runs uh, within the uh, minute or so that it has to run, uh, use this page. Do not hesitate and request a query uh, politely, and uh, usually within 24 to 48 hours you, you should receive a, a response with the query help that you need. All right, so that's the help. Um, Another thing I will show you about the interface, now that we have these results that we're really proud of, right, uh, recent political dynasties in the US, uh, we can download these results over here in the result 
uh, area. We can download it as a JSON file that's useful for developers, or as a tab or comma separated file, or as an HTML table so I can paste it uh, on the wiki. Uh, so that's very useful. <clears throat> and um, with the remaining time that we have, I want to show you some more advanced uh, uses of Wikidata that we won't have time to parse uh, line by line, but that you can uh, explore on your own or that we may cover in a future uh, training on advanced querying. So we'll just look at examples and see the results to convince us further of the awesome power of, uh, of Wikidata uh, without interpreting them uh, line by line. So let's go back to the examples uh, button and look at, for example, um, let's take a sunny topic like death. Um, so just by typing some keyword, the list, which was originally of 400 and, let's see, 456 examples, um, we um, type something and it filters it automatically to only queries that somehow mention or have something to do with death. So let's take, um, yeah, let's take average lifespan by occupation. As you can see, complicated query that we won't have time to cover using all kinds of functions and things. Let's just run this query. <clears throat> what happens? waiting. Let's also queue up another query. Here's, here's an easier one. Presidents and their cause of death ranking. Right. So what do U.S. This should say U.S. presidents, by the way. What do U.S. presidents tend to die of? We run this query and hey, Wikidata query made us an awesome bubble chart. I wasn't expecting that. Well, I was. You maybe weren't. Um, so actually, this is just a query, you know, that results in a table like all the other queries, right? In this case, you know, how many presidents died of stroke? How many presidents died of ballistic trauma, which is the medical term for being shot, uh, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but because of this little line here, this comment, remember when I told you anything you put in the comments totally doesn't matter? Well, I was lying. Uh, there is a special kind of comment uh, with a keyword like this that will actually tell the query, the Wikidata engine, do the query and then immediately present it as a bubble chart. But even if you didn't include it, as long as you have uh, a query that results in some numbers, you can always just switch here to bubble chart. And you get an awesome bubble chart that you can just uh, paste onto your presentation and pretend you have graphic skills. Um, let's go back to the other one. Did this work? Yes, it did. Here we go. So this, remember, was average lifespan by occupation. Again, an interesting question when you think about it, but maybe it didn't occur to you that this is the kind of thing you can get easy answers for, at least if you're not in the uh, actuarial um, line of work. But at least based on the data in Wikidata, which, remember, always is... Uh, partial, incomplete, and by the way, Wikidata covers notable people. So that's a bias right there. But among the notable people covered in uh, Wikidata, you can uh, look at the average age people reach, right? So poets reach the age 63 on average. And of course, these are all the poets, right? Going back to ancient times. So. Uh, these are not, this is not like the, the life expectancy of a 21st century poet, right? But it's just kind of an interesting little query um, that is produced with this complicated sparkle. But remember, uh, remember Picasso. Um, don't be ashamed to steal, to adapt other people's queries. They're all released under CC0. There's no um, uh, licensing problem here. So you can just take this query and change it to whatever you want. You could introduce, for example, a condition that only takes into account uh, people born in the 20th century or later. 
Uh, so even if you don't know how to build a query from the ground up, you can always take an existing query and tweak it, adapt it, change the country, change the language, change whatever you need. Um, speaking of changing the language, um, here's an example, right? So this presidents of uh, cause of death of presidents uh, query. This one doesn't use the big scary line about the service uh, wiki label, right? It, it produces the labels in a different way that we haven't really gone through. But even without understanding how and why this works, we see the English language um, uh, ISO code here. And if we wanted to show the same query, but use the lyrical uh, German terms for these uh, causes of death, we just change it to the German ISO code, DE, run this query again, and what do you know? Uh, most presidents, most US presidents uh, have, have died of Schlaganfall. That's lovely to know. All right, so that's how easy it is to uh, leverage Wikidata's uh, true and profound multilingualism. You can get the, uh, the labels, the results, uh, in any language you want. Uh, going back to our, uh, what was it, uh, poets and novelists query, uh, from Brazil, we can look at the labels for those cities in, say, um, Hebrew. Now, don't panic. Hebrew is written from right to left. <clears throat> so by just changing the language code to Hebrew here, uh, what happened? Well, the names of the poets and novelists are shown in Hebrew where available, and where it's not available, we have few numbers, and the names of the birthplaces are shown in Hebrew where available. So Rio de Janeiro is available in Hebrew. Someone has put in a Hebrew label for it, but whatever this place is does not have a Hebrew label. Now, this may not be what I want, right? If I want Hebrew labels where available, I still probably want like a fallback maybe to English uh, where there is no label instead of the ugly few numbers. So I can just add when using this, this service, right, when using this uh, magical line, I can add a comma here and add EN English as the fallback language and run this query again. <clears throat> now I get Hebrew labels where available, where not available, I get the English label. Right? So that's, again, a very easy way to uh, get the results in the language you need them, where available, and in a fallback language where not available. You can even add multiple commas to, to have multiple uh, fallback languages. Um, okay, back to interesting examples. So we saw uh, this awesome bubble chart. Uh, what, about, what about maps? So from death, let's proceed to hospitals. Uh, here's a sample query called Map of Hospitals. Very simple query. And by running it, we get eventually an awesome map already done for us by Wikidata Query. Um, and this map is as good a, an illustration of our content gaps as any, uh, right? So we can see that uh, Europe and uh, North America are extremely well covered in terms of documenting the existence of hospitals and their coordinates. Because, of course, if Wikidata doesn't have the coordinate property for a particular hospital, it wouldn't be able to display it on the map. So there may be hospitals on Wikidata um, uh, in, uh, you know, Chad, for example, I mean, you know, Chad has some hospitals, presumably, right? Uh, but none of them is both documented on Wikidata with a um, coordinate. Um, if you look at uh, South Africa, for example, we see something interesting. Uh, apparently, nobody has documented any of the uh, hospitals in the Northern Cape, although they undoubtedly exist. Um, even in Cape Town, only hospitals in Cape Town itself have been documented here, as we can zoom in, right? Uh, whereas someone has gone to the trouble of documenting 
what looks to be a good number of hospitals in the Eastern Cape, which only goes to, and you know, this could have been maybe a single afternoon of work, just getting a list of hospitals, making sure they're all listed in Wikidata with their coordinate locations. So this, this shows you uh, Wikidata still has huge gaps in content. And these queries, especially with uh, visualizations like on a map, are a good way of finding out, right? Um, Western Europe has a lot of its hospitals documented with coordinates. Uh, Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, not so much. Uh, this is something you can fix. Uh, so again, uh, the magic here is, let me scroll up, uh, this is a, the map visualization. If you click on the table, <clears throat> you are shown what the query actually uh, gave, gave you, which is really just a list of items with the coordinates. The moment your results include uh, coordinates, you can just switch the visualization to a map. Um, what else can we show here? Um, there's a, there's a fun project called Sum of All Paintings, you know, like a side project uh, or sub project of the Sum of All Knowledge that we're working on is to get the Sum of All Paintings uh, documented. And uh, yeah, this one, map of all the paintings for which we know a location with the count per location. So this will also give us results on a map and will also uh, show us the uh, content gap that we have on Wikidata. But it's worth the wait. So in this query, we will see points on a map which are essentially um, locations where paintings are on display, museums, galleries, etc. And with each point, it will also tell us how many paintings are known to Wikidata to be in that location. So if we um, go to Egypt, <clears throat> Egypt. And what do we know about Egypt? Well, we know that in the Mohammed Mahmoud Khalil Museum, there is one documented artwork, painting, according to Wikidata. I'm sure that museum has more than one painting, but Wikidata uh, volunteers have not yet documented more than one painting there. Again, something we can work on. Conversely, if we um, if we go to say Rome, Rome in Italy uh, has one or two museums, right? In go to the Vatican see what we have here. So this dot, for example, is the Apostolic Palace, and we know, Wikidata knows specifically of two artworks there. Again, this means there is an item on Wikidata about a painting that knows what collection or what institution that painting is in, and further knows the coordinates for that institution. There are two of those documented. Again, there's probably many more artworks five artworks from the Nicolene Chapel, 25 works from the Sistine Chapel, um, one from St. Peter's, uh, etc. But there's all kinds of other places in Rome. Um, with uh, their own numbers. If we go to uh, the Netherlands, which uh, so far has been the center of the Sum of All Paintings project, simply because uh, Dutch volunteers have have uh, spearheaded it, you will see that some of the uh, museums in the Netherlands, although far less uh, famous than uh, the Sistine Chapel, uh, have uh, hundreds, some of them even uh, more than a thousand paintings 
on this map. That's simply because people have gone to the trouble of putting in that data, that the paintings exist, that they have, that they belong in a certain collection, and that puts them on the map. So again, queries and maps are an excellent way to both explore and demonstrate and show impact on coverage, right? So if we were uh, uh, to do, uh, or maybe Egyptian uh, users were to do some kind of Wikidatathon uh, of documenting artworks in the various museums in Cairo, uh, they could show, you know, a before and after uh, image of this map uh, that would um, show the impact of their mapping work. And the state of Wikidata coverage is such at this point in time, in 2018, that there's still plenty to do and a lot of low-hanging fruit um, to, to cover and really improve um, what Wikidata can tell you. I return to, the, to the, the warning. When you cite the results that Wikidata gave you, whether it's about paintings or political dynasties or causes of death, uh, remember the context and remember the inherent biases. Um, if we look at... Uh, we look at causes of death, uh, overall cause of death ranking. Work. Uh, I hope this doesn't time out. Uh, but if you look at the overall cause of death uh, ranking, or uh, you know what, we're gonna, yeah, it does work. Okay. So we have this bubble chart of overall cause of death ranking. And of course, the major cause of death is myocardial infarction, which is medical speak for a heart attack, uh, followed by pneumonia, cancer, various cancers, uh, et cetera. Now, something like uh, dengue fever, which is a huge killer in Asia, is severely underrepresented here because of Wikidata's bias, because Wikidata covers notable people and notable people, by and large, have at, at least you know in, 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 since the early 20th century, have access to antibiotics. And when you have access to antibiotics, you don't tend to die of dengue fever. But a lot of people still die of dengue fever because they don't have access to antibiotics. But those people are very disproportionately uh, less likely to be represented here on Wikidata. So this uh, chart, lovely though it is, cannot be called, I mean, it is called here for, for I don't know, brevity, uh, overall causes of death ranking. But if you were to present it and say, this is what people die of in the world, you would be mistaken and misleading, right? This is what the people documented on Wikidata, whose cause of death was documented on Wikidata, tend to die of, right? That is the accurate description of what we're seeing here. Of course, the more people we describe, the more causes of death we note on Wikidata, the less biased this table would be, but it will forever be biased so long as Wikidata it only covers notable people. Uh, so I hope that makes the case for how you need to carefully um, interpret the results you, you get from Wikidata or the results you share uh, from Wikidata. Um, I guess, I guess um, I'll leave a couple of minutes for questions. Um, I will just mention one other thing, which is Wikidata queries, Sparkle queries over Wikidata, um, are also useful as an intermediate tool in other tools. Um, a good example is, um, take these, uh, yeah, let's take these, Brazilian poets query um, and go to a tool some of you may know called PetScan. If you don't know it, you should know it. It's a very powerful tool and deserves its own uh, tutorial session. But PetScan is a tool that helps you generate lists of pages on the wiki. And um, if I wanted to get all the English Wikipedia articles about the, uh, those Brazilian uh, poets and novelists, and my, the, the best way I found to get at the Brazilian poets or novelists is through Wikidata. I can click on the Wikidata tab here, sorry, the other sources tab here, and simply paste my Sparkle query 
this is just a text box, so it doesn't have any autocomplete or anything like that. So you need to kind of build your query over in the query engine, but you can paste this query basically as is and use that to uh, run your query. And then PetScan runs the Wikidata query uh, to feed the results. See, I have now I have these 1,400 uh, results in PetScan. And uh, when you have results in PetScan, you can do all kinds of amazing things with them. For example, I could ask for this output to come in wiki format, which is kind of awesome because it would essentially generate this for me. Uh, this horrible looking thing is actually a very elegant wiki table. I can just take, grab this whole thing. Uh, those of you who have dealt with wiki tables may know the pain. I can just grab this whole piece of text, right? Let's even show it right now. Uh, go to uh, go to Wikipedia or any wiki, really, right? Um, and just uh, edit my sandbox. Scan example, and just paste this monstrous table. I have, in fact, pasted. It just took a few seconds because it's a long table. And now I can uh, publish it or even just show a preview. Here we go. So, you know, this generates a nice, elegant table uh, with uh, the articles and uh, data about them from, from PetScan with a link to regenerate the table. And it's a useful uh, tool to use PetScan for, if you use Wikidata as a maintenance query, right, you use it to, to come up with things to do, um, it's really nice to have this option to output it as a wiki table so that then you can just paste it on your edit-a-thon page, editing workshop page, as, as a to-do list. Um, I do also want to show you very quickly in the, um, a sample query of this sort that I just described, like a maintenance uh, query. So on my own user page on Wikidata, this is my own user page, uh, ijon, that's uh, my volunteer account. Uh, there are a bunch of query links at the bottom. Each of these is a link to a whole page of uh, useful queries. I'm gonna go to my own uh, examples from a uh, talk I gave in Estonia and uh, check out this query, for example. So this query, which we won't go through and explain, it does include some things we haven't learned today. This query shows the distribution of biography articles by occupations on Estonian Wikipedia. Okay, so and it also gives you the labels in Estonian, which was confusing, so let's switch that to English and run this query. And within, um, see, without speaking a word of Estonian, uh, which statistically most of you do not either, we are able, when the query ends, yes, uh, we are able to see the distribution of occupations covered in biographical articles, in articles about humans on Estonian Wikipedia. So we know they write a lot about politicians and writers and actors, uh, much more, for example, than they do about football players. Okay, so that, that gives us like an instant x-ray of a certain aspect of Estonian Wikipedia without speaking any Estonian, right? I already have this picture of uh, how things are. I could add here a line that asks about the gender of the person, uh, setting it to female so that I can see the distribution of coverage of occupations among women, where we can see maybe some kind of gap. 
uh, I could, of course, change this line from ET Estonian to, say, AF Afrikaans and get the same uh, results about the Afrikaans Wikipedia. So now I can also compare the, the preoccupations of, of certain Wikipedias, right? Are they more or less interested um, in, um, in, certain, uh, um, in certain professions, right? So on Afrikaans, they also write a lot about politicians, and writers and actors, and then football players, et cetera, et cetera, right? In some other wikis, it would be a, a quite different uh, distribution. So Wikidata is also useful in this way to, to make all kinds of uh, queries like that. And those of you who have heard about the gender gap um, uh, tracking uh, project, uh, gender gap index, uh, it is also using Wikidata to reach its results. So we'll take a few minutes for questions. I hope I have at least convinced you that Wikidata is powerful, that you are powerful when you use Wikidata query, and that there's plenty more to uh, learn and dig into. Questions? Uh, no, I think that's it for myself, nothing for me. Okay. Those of you watching this recording, if you have questions, uh, I remind you uh, of the help button, which will take you to a help, a help portal where you can just ask questions. Uh, I remind you of the request a query page. Uh, Wikidata in general is a friendly project, it's a new project, it understands that most of us are also new at Wikidata or new at linked data in general, certainly new in Sparkle. Uh, so don't hesitate, don't be shy, just ask um, and, and you'll receive help. Uh, thank you. Uh, I remind you, use your newfound power for good and not for evil. With great power comes great responsibility, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thank you for your attention.